Well known is our ability to perceive faces in all kinds of objects. The slight cracks in a wall can produce a characteristic profile. A pair of windows and a door can transform a facade into an expression of wonder. This visual trickery is one of the variants of a phenomenon called pareidolia. For us, this effect is nothing more than a funny moment, perhaps in some cases a recurring symbol. But for Arturo Sandoval, pareidolia was a talent, a link with an unthinkable place. Arturo's childhood was normal for that time and for that village in the mountains. He obediently went to school, the only one in the village. And when he came back home, he helped his father and brothers to work the land in a small patch owned by the family. Since he was a child, he had seen countless faces, and each one of them had fascinated him. At school, he made many of his classmates laugh when he pointed out hidden expressions. But he soon realized that the others didn't share his enthusiasm and he ended up being mocked for it. As with any art, his skill was refined with use and time. Although he had learned not to talk about faces, he understood that many of those he saw were imperceptible to others. He knew that he had a unique talent, perhaps to protect that gift, or perhaps because he felt different. He avoided contact with people. He lost himself in that world of faces. Years later, during his adolescence, his talent reached an incomprehensible stage. At some point, the faces began to convey more complex, real expressions. Arturo noticed in them changing emotions that, with time, became more identifiable. Guided by his instinct, he began to study those feelings and he recognized a grammar in them. The sensations that the faces spread took the form of words, and Arturo was granted access to a confusing language. It took him four or five years to master the language of the faces. He didn't miss the human contact. His new company was more interesting to him. The walls of the town were perplexed to see a human speaking to them in their own language. The objects, perhaps because of their passive nature, were less aggressive and more polite. The company that Arturo Sandoval appreciated most was that of the faces that he found in nature those that he discovered in the oak trees, in the moss on a rock, in the soil of the vineyards. In his thirties, he diagnosed an excess of people in the village and chose to seclude himself in the southern forests, in the Batuecas Valley. He walked dense paths and spoke with the faces on them. Also, with those on the trees and rocks, and even with those in the streams, in whose waters occasional patterns are formed and therefore possible friends. The beings of the forest were delighted to converse with a human and helped him to provide himself with food. After a few days of wandering, he found the right place. The faces in the two pines spoke politely the thousand-year-old oak was playful and extroverted, the stream shy but curious. Fragments of the sun dodged through the leaves and fell on the moss and plants. The lucky faces that received the light sung to celebrate. That corner of the forest was governed by a large rock, which helped direct the stream in the right direction. Arturo thought it was majestic. It was very smooth, 
and no face embellished it. Otherwise, Arturo wouldn't have sat on it. He would have considered it rude. It was in this inaccessible place where the man saw the time pass by. One morning, he suddenly missed the village and human contact. He didn't know how many years had passed, but it was more than ten. He decided to go back. His friends understood his decision and even encouraged it. The face of the oak, formed by a wound in the bark and moss, begged him to come back for a visit, and Arturo promised to do so as he climbed down from the rock. The silhouette of the village in the distance looked a bit different to him. It had spread over a hill in a somewhat careless way. These changes were opposed by the landscape, which was still intact, displaying vineyards and orchards with diligent apple trees. The first thing he saw upon arrival was a modest, newly built bar. He walked in and seconds later ran out. The gazes had scared him. He entered the village and a couple of neighbors terrified him again with their presence. Their faces were not human, they were monsters. However, their attitude was peaceful. They were only surprised at Arturo's reaction, as if his fear was inexplicable. Some faces had extra eyes. They contorted into an indecipherable grimace. Where there should have been a nose, there was an ear. The deep and unnatural wrinkles produced a cruel and perpetual smile. He saw fangs and horns. Those monstrosities not only frightened him, they also seemed to express the darkness of each individual. He spoke to some of the walls and cobblestones, who were glad to see him again, but couldn't offer help. Arturo ran to his house and spotted his father and his oldest brother in the front yard. They wore beastly faces. He recognized them by the familiarity of their bodies and clothes. He didn't have the courage to speak to them. He walked out of the village once more. Back in nature, with no people around him, but still with his hometown in sight, he formulated a theory that explained the situation. The faces he saw on objects had become the norm for him. He had forgotten the slight proportions and details that make up a human face and distinguish it from monsters. Now he applied the rules of objects to humans, and the result was those disturbing chimeras. Arturo gave up the world of humans and returned to his corner in the Batuecas Valley with his friends. The faces welcomed him, but they were surprised. They didn't expect such an early return. Arturo sat on top of his rock and explained what had happened. He had made the decision to spend the many days that remained to him there. The faces knew that a man's life is much shorter, and they tried to make him happy. Together they played and sang. One night, after many years, Arturo lay down on his favorite rock for the last time. His friends had sensed the fatal outcome days before, but hid his fate from him. Years and centuries passed in that intimate place in the forest. Arturo's rock was hit by the insistent force of the stream which patiently sculpted. Perennial moss appeared on it, and implacable time drew cracks on its surface. It is no longer smooth, now different patterns cover it. And even if we don't have a special talent, any of us can distinguish the face of Arturo Sandoval in that rock.
I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider giving a like and subscribing to the channel. Have a good day.